In this short video, I'd like to show you how you can do uh, CAP development with HANA Express installed on your local development machine, but completely without the SAP Web IDE for SAP HANA. We will only be using command line tools and um, Microsoft VS Code. So um, my HANA Express is running locally. I'm going to start here just in a little demo directory. And uh, what I want to do is begin with the CDS command. Um, so let's see, CDS, let's just do help to see it. And init is what we want to use. So I want to initialize a new project. This is like uh, using the project creation wizard in, in the Web IDE. Uh, so I'm going to say CDS init. And I want to say I want to add. Also, I want HANA. And I want it to be an MTA, and I want a CI/CD pipeline. Uh, so HANA, oh. HANA MTA pipeline, and I want to name my project Bookshop Two, and it is creating all that content in a folder named Bookshop 2. Uh, and if we look at that, see I've already prepared an example called Bookshop where I'm going to copy a couple pieces from, but the wizard just created this Bookshop 2. So now let's launch uh, VS Code. And you see we have our, our two projects here, but let's mostly focus on this Bookshop 2. That was what was just generated by the by the wizard. And we see a pretty full project structure here. Uh, DB, server, app, uh, the, the general structure, nothing really in here yet. Uh, it's a completely empty uh, content. Now, one thing that I want to do so that the project works very much like it did in the web IDE is I want to customize the dot CD SRC JSON. You see the wizard generated an empty one. Uh, but what I want is I want to bring over another example here. Let's go ahead and put that in. And in this example, uh, what you'll see is I'm basically just telling it when it does the build task that for the server, we want to put it into uh, model SRV folder, DB folder. What this is going to do, instead of putting it into a source folder at the root when we do a build, it's going to put it into... Uh, DB uh, source and SRV uh, uh, source, uh, very much like the Web IDE build does. So, so I want to create a project structure, or I want CDS when I perform a build uh, to to do an equivalent structure to what the Web IDE does. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is I want to customize my package JSON. Uh, this is not absolutely required, but this is going to make it compatible also with HANA Cloud. By adding this new HANA Syntax HDI will cause the CDS build to create HDB table instead of HDB CDS. Um, not, not required to do development against HANA Express, but if I want to create a project that's also compatible with the HANA Cloud, um, then, I, then I want that feature. So let's just edit the package JSON that was created by the wizard and add that HDI syntax. We're telling our models are in SRV DB. Go ahead and save that. And now what we can do, I'll just uh, terminal here. One thing we want to do is we want to go ahead at the root here, shop two, oops. I want to go ahead and run an N NPN install, and that's going to put CDS, Express, and the HANA client uh, into, uh, into a node packages for the, uh, for the root of the project, or node modules, I'm sorry, node modules for the root of the project. Now, while that's running, let's go ahead and create our little demo. There's not much to it. It's a very simple bookshop, single, single entity called books. 
Let's go ahead and create that in our project. Cds. Go ahead and put that in there. It's going to create one table. Now, uh, while that was doing it, it finished uh, installing CDS. Uh, well, all the dependencies here. And now I can go ahead in the root of the project, do a CDS build. And what you're going to see, it's compiling my uh, my schema.cds and it turned it into DB SRC gen and created the HDI config, HDI namespace, and an HDB table file. Of course, if you had a more complex CDS file, it would generate more artifacts. I don't really have a, a service yet, so it didn't, it didn't do much. If we look at the CSN JSON, uh, there's no service definition because I, I haven't created a service yet. We're just, we're just doing database development here. Now, this is the, this is the real, maybe a little bit of a tricky part. Now we want to deploy this uh, into the database. Now, if I was running against the uh, HANA, uh, HANA services in the cloud platform, I could use the CDS deploy to HANA. It would use the CF commands to uh, create the service, uh, create a local configuration file with the uh, with the credentials we need to uh, connect to that service, and then would run the HDI deployer. But we can do all this, even though we don't have the CF commands, we can't use the CDS deploy too. We can do all those commands manually. There's just two or three steps to them. And most of them are one-time steps. Uh, so what we need to do is I need to go into my DB folder. And what we need here, you notice our DB folder, we've got a source and gen, we got our CDS, but we don't have like we would, we generated this with the web IDE. We don't have a package JSON. Um, and that's what we need here. We need a package JSON, the HDI deployer, so that we can run our, our deployment command. So what I'm going to do, and I'm in the DB folder, and I'm going to say uh, npm init, and just call it deploy, just get the rest of the defaults. And what that did is it created a package JSON file in the, in the DB folder. I say yes. <laughs> well, there we are. Then we have our package JSON. Very nice. And now I want to do a npm install SAP HDI deploy dash dash save. And not only will that install that module into this folder, but it's also going to update my package JSON to put that as a dependency in there. Give that a second to run. done and you see it added our SAP HDI deploy as a as a dependency now the only other thing we need to do here is add a start and what do we want it to start uh, we want uh, mood and in fact I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to copy this from where I did uh, before oh I didn't move that going did I uh, I've got it. One second. Basically, we want to run the node command. We want it to start the deploy JS that came in from the HDI deployer. And if you want, you can add auto undeploy that create the same sort of situation that you have when you use the build in, in the web IDE. So now from the command line, when we run npn start, it's going to do the same thing. Well, if I save it, it will do the same thing as the build context menu in the web IDE. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now I know it's going to fail uh, because it cannot find any on a service definition. Now we could go create our service definition with the XS command line, XS create service, and, and then get the credentials from a service key and put them in a default ENV JSON. That's what the CDS command is basically doing when you say CDS deploy to. 
This is where I can use my, my HANA command line utility that we released as an open source sample uh, to do that part for us. So if I say HANA CLI, uh, help, and SDI. Commands real quick. Sorry. Uh, oh, we just want to do a. Uh, we first want to do a, a Hana CLI connect, of course. So we'll say Hana CLI connect, and ask us for uh, the connection string. So uh, local host would work to host and three nine zero. System and no, this is not hot as a service. And now we are connected as an administrative user. I wrote a default EMV uh, admin file uh, and that will allow us to bootstrap our HDI container, which is the command that we want to do next. So I'll use my Help again here. Uh, so yes, it's uh, create container. So on a CLI create container, and what do we want? We can name it whatever we want. We'll just call it Bookshop Two. That's fine. This is like doing the. Uh, uh, Oh, I know what I did when I did the I made a mistake here. This should not be that should not have been port 13. That would have been the system DB. I wanted to go to the first uh, the first tenant. So you have to check on your system which port goes to which tenant in, in this case. Uh, I want to go to the first tenant. That's where I am doing my HDI based development. So I need to actually change that, uh, from, uh, 15, uh, from 13 to 15. So I apologize for, for that. And now let's try this again. So now it's creating the HDI container. Creating the technical users and then wrote all the configuration into this default EMV JSON. And the HDI deployer is going to use the same default uh, uh, EMV JSON file. So now when we once again run the npn start command, this time it should be able to connect to HANA and it's deploying our content into uh, the HANA database, into the container. It is done and uh, we can now things like HANA CLI tables and it will show us yes it did create the my bookshop books table uh, here is the HANA CLI spec table my bookshop books and we can see that the structure of the table what columns what data types they were created um, so a very quick little demo. Uh, of course, you could do much more development. You don't need to redo all the steps to create the package JSON uh, or create the container. That's a one-time thing per project. From this point, I can change my uh, my CDS. You know, for instance, if I would add another column here, test uh, string, save that. I would just come back to the root and say CDS build and regenerate that object and I can go into DB and say NPN start and that will redeploy that to HANA. There we are. It's done. And now if I were to do inspect table, we can see that it now has a test column of uh, NVAR char. Uh, so you see how simple it is to, to then deploy to HANA once you have everything set up. I'm able to do all my development locally, but still against my HANA database uh, without the need for 
uh, for the web IDE or uh, uh, really uh, without the, the need for XSA at all, I'm not going through the controller. I'm actually doing everything here at the SQL level and calling the stored procedures uh, of HDI. Um, but it allows you for a very lightweight, very fast, very iterative development uh, experience.